uh, the new guy, I guess. My name is Andrew Last, 23 years old. I am a licensed real estate agent in South Florida. Um, and I am looking to just grow my business, learn sales the right way, uh, and possibly get into some, you know, creative real estate financing and investment strategies. Looking to get into everything. That you guys are a part of. So, 23 years old. Do you know you have the world in your hands? I have underwear older than you. Oh my God. <laughs> oh Lord. <laughs> was, that a, was that a bad visual there, Felicia? <laughs> <laughs> um, Andrew, tell everybody about your uber cool glasses that you're wearing right now, if you don't mind. Uh, well, these are blue blocking glasses. They basically help block out. Um, Blue light from like bulbs, you know, the bulbs we use inside of our houses, phones, TV screens, um, just helps with eye strain. Makes, does it make, it makes a real difference when you're, I mean, I'm on the computer all day long. Does it make a real difference? I, I would say, yeah. And I would say the it starts making a huge difference, um, especially for someone like yourself and like all of us who uses technology quite often. You know, if you, if you put them on and use them for like maybe half an hour, an hour, it doesn't really make too big of a difference. Once you start really getting into it and using them for, you know, longer sessions, you, you see it make a big difference. Wow. For sleep, okay. That's pretty, that's why I use them mostly. Before I go okay. to bed, I'm like looking at screens and stuff. So. Oh, excellent. Excellent. I have, um, thank you for sharing all that. I have somebody here listed. It's just iPhone. Could you identify yourself, please? Oh, <laughs> hold on. Shoot. Sure. Who are you? Is it Mr. and Mrs. iPhone? Oh, yeah. Look who that is. <laughs> oh, oh, I'm on mute or I'm on unmute. Hi, guys. Sorry, I'm on my phone. I'm waiting for Chantel. But yeah, we got a lot to do yeah, this morning. Hi. We are. Yes, we are. We're all waiting for Chantel. Well, good morning, everybody. Um, good morning. Uh, a couple announcements uh, before we go. Nicole is here. Did you guys on my screen? I start off with Nicole here. In fact, um, she gave me a great idea. Did you see my screen share um, about um, Nicole? Tell everybody about this. You're okay. Now you're on. Okay, so um, I signed up for a uh, program, and with it came a um, this this. Um, this, as you see, Bandit Signs on Wheel program, I posted an ad, I think it was what, like one o'clock in the morning, because I sent, I sent this to Claude as soon as I hit post. Oh, sorry, my cleaning lady. Okay, well, she's sorry. It's basically, um, uh, you, you can other... Okay, sorry. <laughs> sorry, I'll be here, but do your thing. So, no worries. Bye. Hi. Hi. Good, thank you. Sorry, guys. We have, um, so we have 8,200 8, people just watched you talk to your cleaning lady. <laughs> oh, God. Or 18. I don't know. It's uh, one or the other. I tend to exaggerate. Hi. Anyway, um, Nicole, while well, she's uh, we, uh, you can basically put this in your window or somebody else's window, and then you, if they bring you a deal, uh, you pay them a commission. And so you get all these other people driving around with your, uh, and Nicole, correct me, uh, basically other people driving around with your business and your phone number in their car. Yeah, I, so I had five responses, and four of those were within a half an hour. One girl has a Mercedes Benz. Um, and I could not put this in the Craigslist ad, but there's also an affiliate side too. So for every person that they bring in, um, uh, it's optional. You could do it any way you want, but I'm going to pay him $10 per install because that's what the guy who put this together does. And then 300 per um, affiliate, you know, for, per, you know, affiliate um, transaction that goes through. So if you guys are interested, um, and if you wanted to give me a little love for uh, <laughs> passing on the idea. Put your, put the link inside the chat room. Okay, I'm going to get an affiliate link today. Because when I was doing this, I was like, wow, I really like this. Too late. Today is the, is right now, now is the gestalt is now. Okay, they're going to, I think they're going to send it to me any minute now. Put it in the Skype, put it in the Skype uh, group okay. uh, then later on. I will. Uh, today. Okay, great. That's your job today. Um, okay. I am um, I'm, I'm the speaker and the uh, San Diego Scottish Rights Center. 
on um, when am I speaking? Um, hey, hey, Nicole. Yeah. Uh, if you would put your email address in the chat box, and then we can correspond, and you can send us the affiliate link when you get it. Absolutely. Yeah, and I'll put it in the main um, site room as well. Yeah. I'll put sure. all that. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Okay. You got it. Sorry, Claude. That's all right. That's all right. Um, I got a speaking gig uh, October the 9th in San Diego um, at the uh, San Diego Creative Investors Association. We're getting some loud background noise here. Okay, that's the uh, cleaning lady discussion. Okay, she's muted. <laughs> uh, so anyway, I'd love to see any of you guys there. Register online. I put it in the Skype box anyway. Uh, SDCIA is just uh, the largest real estate club, if, it's, if not one of the top real estate clubs in terms of size. Uh, they've had meetings where they've had five, six hundred people show up there. It's a, it's an amazing, uh, it's an amazing real estate club. Their, their whole premise is they're there for the numbers. You know how some of these clubs are the guru of the week club and the first ten people to the back of the room. You guys know how I feel about that stuff. So anyway, um, uh, love to see somebody there October the 9th. It's, uh, it's an expo actually. It's all different presenters and stuff like that. But I have. Uh, me, myself, and two other people are doing the keynotes. So always good to see a friendly face in the house. Um, book, uh, book review. Reading, um, I'm, I'm reading this actually a second time in audio and written. Has anyone ever hear um, any health nuts in the room? Okay. Uh, Michael Greger, uh, How Not to Die. An amazing book. He's a doctor, and his whole life is about telling people to eat uh, more healthier foods and things like that. Real common sense stuff. Very good book. Very down to earth. Uh, if you, audio is also very good. He, he, he actually does the audio himself. He didn't hire somebody. So just wanted to share that with you. I've been listening to this morning when I was taking my run. Um, so uh, Ani had a really good idea, I think, uh, last week. He said something about a challenge or a gauntlet. Why don't we have a challenge or a gauntlet? So, uh, Ani, go ahead. Yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. Why not? Let's do the gauntlet of whomever does closes the most business in the next 30 days, maybe. Okay, very, actual business or actual cash made? I want, I want you guys to help me here. We're going to have a little contest in September. It's cash. Okay, and whoever, um, you guys help me with this. I think it should be 30 days. And whoever makes the most money or the most deals or the most contracts, you guys tell me what you would like. And there will be, a, we're going to do an award. We're going to call it, I was going to call it the Maxi after my mentor Max, but someone told me that that's a sanitary device. Or, uh, um, so I, I, I thought I'd call it the Max, like the Oscar. Um, and so uh, tell me what you guys would like to see in a contest. What would be fair? That'd be a great idea. Most money made. In the most, next okay. It's the honor system, most documented money made, or, or you have to come on the screen and say how you made it and how much you made. Is it all gross profit, or is it money that you would have seen on contracts for the next three years, or is it just just cash up front? What is it you want to look at? I want to keep it simple. I, th I thank you, Steve, because I thought a lot about what you just said. How about just the money in hand, actual, real money you actually made over 30 days? $1,000, $100,000, $1,000,000, whatever. Is that fair? So the people who already got money are the winners. <laughs> well, how about the, the, well, that's the money they have already, but the money they earned in just 30, uh, 30 days at September, 30 days in September. Okay. It's money they did earn. I like the most deals closed because you got guys in California, Arizona, you know, big high, high earning places where the numbers are a little different. 30, 40, 60,000. In, in that's September. true. That's a good point. Okay. The other, the other issue you've got is that some people already have six or seven deals in their pipeline. Okay. You know, and they may all close in this month. That's true. So it needs to be dated after 827? 
How about it needs to be dated 9-1 to 9-30? That's it. Whatever you earn, brand new business, 9-1. I want to keep this as fair. And so anybody, I want to see, uh, anybody can win. I'm open to all ideas here. Otherwise, we'll let this evolve from year to year and we'll fine tune it as we go along. And I'm going to have not going to count mailbox money long term. You're just going to count whatever cash you collect up front. Cash from new business made in 30 days. What do you think? Missing the boat. Yep. I like it. Okay. Okay. Well, uh, I'll send out, I'll put something in Skype with the rules and regulations. I'm going to have a specially designed trophy, a beautiful plexiglass trophy. And every year we're going to give that award to the top gut salesperson. Is that a good idea? You guys like yeah. that? Okay. And may I'll think of some other, prizes or something like that but the trophy was where you can come every time you come on monday you can hold your trophy in front of everybody else okay so there's a little uh, pride there okay good morning what else do we uh let's do a kind of an open forum today go around the room anybody have a deal they want to discuss or question on lease purchasing uh george i see you there um any role plays uh open forum day today guys so george we'll start with you you raised your hand well, it's not a deal, but it is cash in the pocket. Um, I did a consulting gig for uh, an investor that came to me through one of my other friends. And um, he, he had a subject to deal and didn't know how to put the paperwork together. So I did, I earned $500 over, you know, one day to uh, put the, pay, you know, build the land trust and then put the paperwork package together for him. Uh, I've got a lot of experience in doing subject to deals and land trusts. And uh, so I just thought I'd mention that. And if anybody on the call needs help with, uh, um, with doing land trusts or subject to, I'm available. And uh, I'm not free, as, as Claude says, but. <laughs> I'm not so, uh, but anyway, it, uh, it was a good little payday. Good. How do you keep from crossing the line and not practicing, uh, uh, not practicing as an attorney? Actually, um, as long as a, a land trust is a contract between the trustee and the beneficiary. Mm -hmm. And as long as you're the trustee and you have a, a beneficial, you know, a, a residual interest in the trust, uh, and you, so I, I, um, retain the right to name future trustees at the direction of the beneficiary that's not practicing law have you checked that out yeah okay oh just just want don't want you to get in trouble on that stuff yeah no i'm i'm very uh cognizant of you know what what i don't want to do is practice law without a license but yes so. you don't want to get even close to that yeah. Uh, what's what's the story in North Carolina? What's uh, how's real estate there? Steady. Uh, it's it's booming. I mean the uh, uh, the market is a a seller's market. Um, houses are going for you know top dollar and close with you know get under contract within a week. That's the um, what I would call the retail side of the business. Um, the creative side of the business there don't there there's almost no lease options available uh in this area and uh you know it i mean if you have if you have a lease option it's real easy to find a a buyer for it or a tenant buyer but le lease options i've always found are created not found right uh, absolutely Okay, good. Who's um, uh, Matt Serka? You want to come on? You just did it. You made an offer yesterday, Matt. You want to come on for a second? Sure. I got about 10 minutes here. How's it going? Good, good. You did a deal yesterday. You called me up on it. Tell us, uh, tell everybody about it real quick. Yeah, so it's a very tired landlord. He's just fed up with being a, being a landlord, right? And like down in North Carolina, it's a really, really hot market up in Wisconsin. Houses are going for top dollar, and they know it. So um, I got him down to an idea of what his like lower, lower prices that he can take. And I told him, I told him that I would think about it. I wanted to rerun my numbers. I talked to Claude about it because yeah, I'm fairly new, but I, I think I know enough that maybe I just need to say go with it. And he just countered this morning, uh, 
170. I gave him an offer for 160, and the ARV is around 220. So um, I would likely, I would likely go and see if I might partner with somebody up in Green Bay. I know who does a huge volume of business wholesaling. So this would be essentially be a wholesale deal. Okay. So to um, summarize, so to summarize, you got a house, uh, fifty yeah. thousand worth 220. You're negotiating between a 160 and 170 right now. Hopefully, you'll have it yeah. under contract today. Uh, so you're looking yep. at a minimum of 50,000 under market. Just about, yeah. Okay, it's good. Potentially more because right, like prices are going up. That comes nearby, I'm selling for like 300 pounds. And This is a, like built, I think in the 70s or 80s, probably maybe 90s even. I have to double check, but okay. nice. Okay. Just yeah, okay. So you That's have. Good. Can you put together a prospectus and pop it into the um, um, into the Skype group this uh, today? Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll do that this evening. Okay, money. Hey, so money can't. doesn't money doesn't sleep, and neither should you. I, yeah, uh, it's like less and less I want to, man. Okay. The way it is. How important? Uh, very good. Your sound is up. I'm going to mute you right now because your sound is not so hot there, Matt. I'm sorry. But um, put that okay. information, put a prospectus by that. Uh, does everybody know what I mean by a prospectus? Summary. A summary. Yeah. If I was an investor and you want, you need 50,000, you need, um, you need $160,000. You found a deal, you have it under a contract and you need $160,000. You don't have it right now. You're busy with other deals. What are you good? What piece of paper can you give me? Okay, not something this thick. Okay, but what one or two, three sheets can you give me that entices me to get back on the phone with you and give you some money? What should be included in that little report? Return on investment. Very good. How much money am I going to make? Okay, how about pictures of the property? What else? What's the important thing? How about how do we determine the value? Comps? should be in there, right? How about a marketability study or one or two paragraphs about what can be done with the property so to entice somebody? Okay, we're always selling, aren't we? Absolutely. Always. So little something, you want an investor to give you a lot of money and there's plenty of money out there, by the way, if you have a good deal, um, you just gotta put together a little something. Okay, who's up next? Who's got a deal there or share, wants to share something with the group or has a question, lease purchasing, wholesale, I'll, sales, anything? I'll closing something next week, but I won't count it in the uh, contest. All right. Tell everybody. We got some newbies here. Tell everybody who, who you are, lovely Audrey. Uh, I'm Audrey Morgus, and I live in West Hollywood, and I sell real estate here for all buyers and sellers. I have a listing that I'm trying to get rid of, and I have a pending sale that will close next Friday, and I have another potential duplex for sale, as a, probably a pocket right now, but for the right investor for the right money, you can have you a do, fantastic West Side duplex. You do, something, you do something a little bit different than some of the other investors, you and Ani and Chantel and uh, somebody, uh, some, somebody else in this group, uh, you have a real estate license. I do. I have a real estate license and uh, I'm with a brokerage and I'm, I'm definitely later this year going to go back and get my broker's license. I don't know if that means I'll become just a sole broker because then, you know, there's a, I'm not ready for that risk or expense that comes with that. But um, yeah, so I sell and I legally sell real estate in California, anywhere in California, particularly Los Angeles. What do, what do, um, what's the, uh, what's the average price of a home now in LA? Uh, the average price is about 650, 675. What does that get you? A cardboard box behind the Walmart or what does that no, get you? No, it depends. Well, location, location, location. What's the high end in LA right now? I have a, uh, the high end in LA right now is, I don't know, 150 million. Really? Oh 200 million. That's 180 cool. million is the high right now. Wow. I have a $3 million listing right now, but 
there's something going on in the market right now here where that house is because that is the average and it's not overpriced. And there's 12 houses for sale right there in that same exact circle. And prices have been lowered on some of them and they're just not selling right now. Okay. We're trying to determine why. Even the average for that home in that area is about 59 days. And it's been for sale for about 37 days. And we're like, what's up? How much is that home? It's 29998. Okay, so if we reach that, uh, what do they call it? Diminishing returns? Who's an econ economist here? Isn't it, uh, a I mean, San Francisco, LA, and even San Diego now, the real estate has gotten so expensive. Is it finally you know, starting to level off? No, not no. yet. San Francisco is in its own stratosphere. I don't know if you saw a report came out. If you make 100000 in San Francisco, you are at the poverty level. <laughs> That's amazing. That's amazing. So, um, in uh, in LA, what are the top? I'm just curious. What do what do top realtors make in LA in terms of commissions and things like that? A lot. Can you can you give me? Do you have a ballpark? What are they? What what is an average commission? Um, what is it? What are the? T I'm just curious. I love. I find this motivating when I hear other people making <laughs> phenomenal incomes. A top realtor in LA. Do they? Are they a millionaire? Yes, probably. And they probably own a lot of property. And they are continually, their schedule consists of they get up, like they work out, they're prospecting by 8 a.m., they're meeting, they're, their assistant, if they're that big, they're, not, they're only showing top tier uh, homes. And if you're in the five, 10, $15 million home range, a lot of times that's not your first, second, third, or even fourth property here. It's, you know, something you visit a couple times a year and then, or rent out. That happens a lot as well for shoots or some partiers or young Hollywood people. So uh, your, your schedule consists of prospecting, prospecting, meeting, planning, and prospecting. That is your life. As a realtor in LA or, or just in California or high-end markets, do you have an advantage not only making commissions, but also getting on the inside track of early deals? Yes, you also have the inside track of networking with those, with that particular um, group, which is what you want. I'm gonna be leaving my brokerage later this year because I feel I've gone as far as I can go there and I need to go to the next tier. I have to be in that tier. And so it's all who you surround yourself with all day long. You go to a lot of networking events or you just meet, you know, you hang out around what you want to be. And here it can be anything. You can make a good living and only sell, you know, five, six, seven hundred thousand dollar homes. You just have to sell a lot more of them. Interesting. Interesting. So how many deals you how many deals are you juggling right now? Right now I'm juggling two to three. Okay. Three. It's not a lot. And of course, it's all on me all day long. Good for you. Well, thank you for sharing that. That's interesting. Um, who else? Um, next person. Now, who's up here? Who has a question or story to tell or, or anything? we got an open forum going on here today. I have a question. Go ahead, Felicia. Um, I did pull up the uh, contracts that you were telling me to pull up. Um, so I wanted to see what, because some of them were dated like 2011, uh, but then uh, um, some of them were dated for like 2011, um, but you had like sub, uh, two or three in there for the same way. And you told me to remind you on the call. Um, so I wanted to see what, what you guys are currently using as far as, um, letters of intent and things of that nature because I do have a spreadsheet that I use but I want to make sure that I'm I'm doing everything um, the guts you know using the guts method all the way through uh, okay so I'm, I'm I'm not sure if I understand your question though what is your question my question is do you have like a updated of just all the forms that you use in case you have an owner finance, in case you have a lease option, um, or, you know, for the different 
deals that you might do, the different creative financing methods that you might do? Do you have? Because I know, like, on my screen here, on my computer, I have just a, a bookmark here with all of the documents that I use. Um, but I know that you were a lawyer before, so I know that your things will be. I'm not practice. I don't practice. I'm recovering. Okay. All right. I do. All I do is this. Uh, so uh, contracts to me, um, you know, bottom line, uh, and and you know, I do update the contracts. I mean, I need to change the. What you're looking at is the copyright, the original copyright, but the contracts have been updated. Um, letters of intent are to me quickie offers, short term offers, single page where you put. And we had a discussion, I think, a couple of weeks ago about letters of intent. Um, on there, and I have a video on YouTube. Uh, a letter of intent can it could be made to into an offer, but it'd be a very loosey goosey offer. It, it's lacking in the specifics. It's basically to get the prospect interested in a dialogue where you put, I can do cash, I can do a lease purchase, I can do subject to or owner finance. Would you get back to me by 4:30 to continue this discussion, or what meets with your approval? A regular contract, I believe. Um, I don't believe in one size fits all. I like to use, con uh, uh, I like to use, depending on the transaction I use, I like to use uh, the right contract. A lease purchase, I might use a separate lease and a separate option to purchase to protect me if it's my own property. Okay, if it's someone else's property, I might use a combined contract, a lease with an option to purchase. Okay, that's assignable and things like that. So I you try to use the right kind. I tend to, my philosophy on contracts is they should be very short. They should be in plain language. Um, they shouldn't be 20, 30 pages. They should be very concise. So that uh, what happens when people understand the legal writing, when they, when they see a contract and they understand it, what do they do? What do we hope they'll do? Sign it. <laughs> Sign it. But if you give them a contract that's, uh, you know, uh, too, too extensive and everything. They're going to get a little nervous. They're going to call Mr. Lawyer in. Then you're going to renegotiate the deal or lose the deal too. Um, so I tend to I like to keep contracts simple. I do not mind if you use the uh, board of realtor contracts for your state. There are short contracts in board of realtor. Some of them are very, California I think is like 18 pages now, uh, something crazy long. Um, but they do have short form offers and they, um, they would hold up in a court of law because they're approved by the Department of Real Estate in your state. Uh, just make sure a lot of those contracts do not have um, uh, right of assignment clauses in them. That's real important to put in all your agreements, things like that. So what kind of deal are you working on? It, it, it is really depends on what kind, you know, you tell me the deal and then I'll tell you the contract to use. Uh, rather than, uh, you know, and I've seen some contracts from some other gurus where they're a contract to make a contract. Okay, uh, those are illegal. Uh, you can't make a contract to make a contract. A contract is by itself um, solely. So some of that information from other gurus is not accurate. It's, uh, it won't hold right. up in the court of law. Right, that's why I want to make sure I'm doing it your way. Um, so like, I'll give you an example. For example, today, um, I have to send this guy a letter of intent and I do believe he's going to do it because he said that he wants to do a rent to own. Um, so I would do in this case, a rent to own or a lease to own or what, you know, whatever we want to Is call it. Is he the buyer or the seller? He's the seller. Okay. And you've negotiated with him on the phone? Yes. Did you get him on video by the way? Oh no, that was our very first call. So, okay. you, you know, I've been trying that, uh, well, I've been sending the the message. I, I do everything like how I try to do everything just the way you have it. And so I had a lady respond today. She was like, "Oh, I won't need FaceTime or Zoom. Um, just just a regular phone call will do." <laughs> but if, I always ask people if they have an iPhone, and then I don't even give them a choice. I just make a FaceTime call. A lot of people who have an iPhone have never used FaceTime. It's built in. They don't have to do anything except hit the little accept button. And I think psychologically, uh, there's a big advantage to having a physical presence in the video call. Yeah, well, the next call I do with uh, Marcus, that's his name today, uh, I'll, I'll ask him to, um, or make him do the FaceTime, you know, whatever the case is. It's not essential, it's not required. It just puts you in a better selling position um, on this property. So you're gonna get a contract from him today. 
What if he said, uh, are you going to get a commitment today or get fired today? I'm going to get a commitment today. Okay. And if he says, I want to think about it, uh, call me on Thursday or Friday, what are you going to do? You're not allowed to think about it. Oh, what do you mean I'm not allowed to think about it? How dare you? Well, I mean, you said you already, you want to do a rent to own. Uh, you and your wife are moving out on September the 18th. I presented you the offer that you want. There's nothing to think about. Hey, no, that's outrageous. No one talks to me like that. How dare you? <laughs> well, I mean, Marcus, we've already discussed uh, the options that you would like to do in this deal. Um, everything is exactly how you want it. What, what would you like to think about? Well, look, first of all, you got to fix it. I'm mad at you. How do you fix that? Mm. Is, am I going to do a deal with you if I'm ticked off? No. Not likely, is it? Give How do you fix stroke. that? Someone help her. How do you fix that? Give him a stroke. Go ahead, you two. Felicia and George, go for it. Give me a stroke, Felicia. Give you a stroke? Yeah. Um, well, I mean, Mark, is this, you, you are, this is a very beautiful house that you have here. Um, and it's already been on the market for three months with the realtor. Um, and you already you, you think that it's, it's not going to sell with the realtor so that is why you're considering the rent to own option um i'd love to buy your house it is a gorgeous house and and i love working with you by the way um but we we, we have to move forward um, i have another list of people that i have to call so um i'll need your decision today be pissed off george uh, what do you mean we've got to move forward you know what you know, I may just give it to the realtor again. Yeah, well, it's already listed with the realtor, and you your plan is to remove it from the realtor, right, from the MLS? Well, I was considering that, but, you know, I, I don't really see a good reason to do that. Okay, let's reverse the role now, okay? Uh, all right, uh, I, want, I, want, um, I want Felicia to be ticked off. She's the seller. And George, you tell her she's not allowed to think about it. And I, and I want you to fix it, George. You know how to do it. Okay. Be, be, can you be mad, Felicia? I know you're sweet, but can you be mad? <laughs> I, I'll try. Um, go ahead, George. So, Felicia, you, you, uh, you said that you'd like to uh, consider doing a lease option on this house. And I think, you know, certainly if you do a lease option with me, we can get it uh, get you a tenant buyer in there in the next couple of weeks. How does that sound? I want to think about it. Yeah, I want to think about it. Well, you can't think about it, Felicia. You've already, you've already told me that you're really dissatisfied with your realtor. And everything that, that we've discussed, uh, you've, you've been agreeable to. Um, as, you know, we've, I told you what the benefits of, of the lease option are. You get to get a tenant. But I still buyer. want to think about it because I I was just going to sell my house and now here you are presenting me a rent to own option. I, I want to think about it. But your house hasn't sold yet, has it? No, it hasn't sold. So what are you going to do if it doesn't sell? But you know, I'm not in that big of a hurry, George. Okay, I'm not in that big of a hurry. Um, we have the money to pay for it if we do need to pay for, for this house as well as our other house that we're moving into. So I, I have time to think about it. Um, my wife and I, we need to discuss this. Okay. Well, before I get off the phone, <laughs> can I ask you one last question? Uh, sure, absolutely. Um, if we could show you a way that you could get your house sold and somebody, uh, making your mortgage payments this month, uh, that's not something you'd be interested in, is it? It depends. It, it depends upon what? It depends on how much of a down payment they're going to put um, and, you know, what do they have for monthly rent. Okay, our three minutes are up. Okay, Andrew, I'm going to put you on the hot seat. She's a tough... She's tough. Okay. She was tough on you. Andrew, you know what? 
Andrew, you and I had an agreement up front. You know, it's okay to fire me. And now you say you want to think about it. You're not allowed to think about it, Andrew. Well, what do you mean I'm not allowed to think about it? Because I, you know what? When people say to me they want to think about it, they're, they're really being polite because they know how sensitive I am. And they just want to, they just really mean to say no. Isn't that the truth? Well, I mean, I don't know if it's that Claude. You know, I mean, I had my house for sale with this realtor, and you know, here you are. You're you're presenting me with this other option. I've never done it, done anything like it. So you know, I mean, it's yeah, just, uh, you're right. It's brand new. It's a little scary. And if I was in your shoes, I'd probably feel the same way. But the problem still exists. Didn't you tell me that you're being having a job transfer? You don't want to manage a property from a thousand miles away. You don't want to have double payments and all those other things. And that, and you're moving in what three, four weeks. Yeah, next month. Okay. You know, I had a friend in the same situation, a lot of stress, a lot of overhead, a lot of money going out, no savings, going into debt and everything. Is that really what you want? Or imagine if you could solve that problem today with a rent own, and I guarantee payments were made on time and the property was well taken care of. You mean we couldn't do business? It's okay to say no. I think we could do some business. Well, thank you. Boom. Yeah, see. You can fix it after all. That was a good role play. Thank you, Andrew. Um, the, thing, the thing is, you got to fight for it. You got to be willing to, you know, stand your ground, be an authority figure. And sometimes it's okay to step on their toes a little bit. Because what do they really mean when they, I'll think about it, I'll get back to you? What are they really saying? Uh, no. N-O. They're saying no. And then what do we do? What does the amateur do? We it's okay to them. say no to me. They, we chase them. We follow them. We stay up late at night doing contracts and everything. And it's all a waste of time. Don't we hate wasting time, Audrey? I see you smiling. You know what? You know, Claude, I see people now that, I'm, that are part of the uh, place that I broker out of. And they are on offering free consultation, free advice. And I just look at that and think... Well, never mind what I think. You know what I think. <laughs> I think I used to be that all day long. I don't there's, have... a guy, there's a guy out there who is just like you. I think his name is, you know, he's not a uh, Grant, Grant Cardona. He's Dan Locke or Dan Loke, L-O-K. Oh. Oh. Dan, have you, know, have you watched this guy? He's Claude. He's you to a T. You're a little better there, but he's all, you know, he's, he says up front, I don't, the one thing you're not going to say to me is I'll think about it. Because we both know what that means. Yeah, he has a lot of good videos out there, and I'm not going to say anything. Cause, um, but uh, use your imagination. Where do you think he learned all that from? You. <laughs> I'm not saying. I'm not answering that question. Let me tell you why. Because he his videos are your videos. Sell me this pen. Yeah. Yeah. Pen, yeah. Things like that. I'm not the only person in the world who has a sell sell me this pen video out there, but. Um, yeah, but you know, but but the free advice thing. I mean, you can't you can't command top dollar, and then come off free all day long. You can't have it both ways. You can't. Uh, but uh, I do free consultations, and that always brings me in new people. But then we have the skill set. Some of the things we're doing here. I mean, if you get somebody who wants to do a real estate deal, but they have no money and they don't have a property or anything, you're just doing free consulting. What do you, what do you, get, you know, there's a reason for this little thing on my desk. What are we supposed to do? Time is money. Yeah, you're getting one of these, Nicole. Check your mail. The most, <laughs> the most critical thing is to ask the motivating questions because you can, you can go on bad appointments all day long. You're not asking the proper questions. How do you know if they're motivated or committed or they have the money? We have to, so the, good set, well said. Yeah, no, you're right, you're right, you're right, Ani. Um, you know, we have to, the second step in the gut sales method is qualification. There are five areas to qualify. What's the first one? Ani just said it. Agenda. Motivation. Uh, Agenda, motivation. Commitment closed. When we get to the qualification, the most important step, sub step or baby step is qualific is motivation. Are they motivated to do a deal today? Or do they just want to, you know, are they lonely and want to talk to you? Do they want to pick your brain for free? I mean, we're in business to make money today. So I want to qualify someone real quick. I get if they have on a one through ten scale, can I can I find out if they're motivated? Can I make them motivated? 
okay? And then the next step, of course, is are they the owner in the home? Do they have the authority? We need to talk about money if they're the buyer. Hey, have you been pre-qualified? Can you get the loan for this million dollar house? Can you, uh, do you have 15, 20,000 to put down as option money? Okay, so say we get somebody who's an eight, nine, or 10. I get a lot of people for free consultations, Audrey. They're eight, nine, or 10. And then I go to the money part. Right. And and they're flat broke, and I'll say, and I say the magic words, it's over. I get to fire you now. You, well, you know, you call it a free consultation, and it is a free consult. It, it's, the, it's really the consult to see if we should have, if we can do business. You, you have to have that first free one. Of course you do. But these people are offering free advice. I'll talk to you all day. Let me take you on a few showings. Let me be a tour guide. Oh, that's different. I'm not, I, 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 you're, oh, they're not ready. They'll come back. I'll, I'm going to circle back in, uh, you know, six months. And I mean, it's just, I have a friend right now that wants to buy a condo in uh, Mammoth. And uh, she wanted to go on this weekend trip and said, Audrey, let's go look at houses. And I said, are you, are you approved? No, we're not going. That's it. Good for but you. Pre Claude, and everybody's heard me say this every single week. B B C before Claude, okay? <laughs> I would it would be like, oh sure, maybe I'm gonna hook you because I'm gonna take you out and spend my time and my money and my gas and now forget it. Money, money all day long. But you, uh, I think there's something to be said about putting yourself first having enough self-esteem and confidence to say to somebody, hey, um, I don't mind helping you. I don't mind giving you consultation and everything. What's going to happen at the end of this conversation? Are we going to go out and find a home, buy a home? Are you going to do a lease purchase with me? What can we do today? Why are we talking today? These direct, assertive, affirmative questions that, you know, you, you've got you've to, you know, you've got to be the uh, white elephant in the china shop, right? You, you know, otherwise, if we're too submissive, if we're too subservient to the prospect or anybody, what happens? Stepped on. Doormat. Oh, they don't have enough self-esteem. They don't have enough respect for their time, knowledge, and energy to stand up for themselves. And go ahead, uh, Felicia. <laughs> Thank you. I just wanted to ask, um, uh, how would you, because we were just doing the, the role play, I wanted to know, like, when you're ending that call, how would you end it um, as far as making sure that you'll get back to that person? Um, so with, with me, what I did was I told him I would email him an offer, um, and then if he liked the offer or if he doesn't like the offer, just get back to me. But I usually like to... What time? Um, by the end of the day. No, no, no. That's too ambiguous. Okay. What does the end of the day mean? What does that mean? What does that mean to somebody who's picking your brain using you for free? You just, get them a, you just gave them a get out of jail card. Okay. I know. That's why I felt like I did it wrong, so I wanted to know how you would end that call. Okay. Um, Felicia, I'm going to send you an offer. I, I really appreciate the discussion. I'd like to help you solve your problem. I'm going to send you something. Uh, I, I'm my, I have an opening in my schedule at 4.30 today. Can we discuss whether or not we're going to move forward and make a commitment or we're, it's over? Can we do that at 4.30? Perfect. I like that. Okay. Well, respond, see we'll play. Oh, yeah, absolutely. 4.30. That works for me. Okay. I'm going to be canceling some other appointments because this is important. So you're, you're not going to leave me hanging, right? You're going to be on 4.30 on the iPhone or Skype, right? Yes. Okay. Because okay. I got to reschedule my grandma's 92nd birthday party. <laughs> I love it. I, love I, might it. Not, I might do that. I might not. But what am I? I have to create that I'm important. My life is important. This is important. Or I'll give you a way out. Or Felicia, you can say no to me right now. If you don't think there's a snowball's chance that in hell that we're going to do a deal, you can fire me right now. But the problem still exists. You're still going to have that vacant home costing you $2,200 a month. Are we in a position? Do you think we can move forward today or is it over? Sure, absolutely. 4.30, I'll be there. Okay. I'll, and I'll also send you a letter of intent and you can look it over, discuss it with your husband, your attorney, and at 430, we'll decide whether to move forward or it's over. Fair? Fair enough. I'm sorry, what? Yes, that's fair. Okay, thank you. Boom. Why don't we do that? What's right? Is assertive a dirty word? No. 
Why aren't we assertive? Fear. Fear, fear of what? Go deep. Rejection. Rejection. They won't like me. I'm assertive. I, I, I value my life. Oh, they may not like me. Who cares? Right, because they're all about how they look all day. I know so many ages. They're about how they look all day long. I used to be the same thing. I didn't want to get rejected. Now I, yeah, I, two years later, I just basically, I don't care. I just, to the ones I'm speaking with. Yeah, you're, you're right. I, I think, you know, to, I don't know who that, someone's phone, pick it up. Oh, it's George. Okay, that's <laughs> up. Okay, who hasn't who has something they want to kick in here? Steve, you're awfully quiet today. Steve Ed, Dar, I, Steve D. Well, I'm I'm actually at a Starbucks, so I just uh, <laughs> I'm, get me a latte. Yeah, I'm kind of lurking right now. Okay. Uh, um, so I've, that's the only reason why I don't want to. I don't know. I don't know. Talk to really. Steve. Are you in line? Is there a stranger <laughs> around? Here? No, actually, you know what? I I, I I guess I could probably talk. I don't. I just haven't. Let's done. let's see you go to a total stranger in Starbucks and engage them in a conversation. <laughs> oh my god! Oh my god! I didn't, I won't put you on the spot That's there. Easy. I don't know. Let me. Well, everyone who's sitting by themselves or uh, I bet you Chantel could do it. Oh, I was. Chantel I, does it all the time. When <laughs> I. That's funny. You said that she when I first started in real estate, I would approach, approach random people like at In and Out. Well, you're the best at it. I mean, Chantel yeah. gives her cards out to everybody and anybody. <laughs> how do you do it? How do yeah, you start? Just, how do you engage? How do you initiate a conversation with a total stranger at In and Out Burger, Chantel? Oh my gosh, I love your pink lipstick or I love your blue shirt. And then just with a compliment, a genuine compliment, of course. And then it just kind of goes from there. Yeah. But what happens if we speak to enough people <laughs> in our business? Okay. And I'm not saying to go to talk to strangers all day long, but what happens? Do you think we all still have that fear about talking to strangers? We've talked a lot about this. I, I think if we get over that yeah. fear and we can start talking to anybody anywhere, like a, like a Walmart greeter, okay, and just engage people, I think that's a real skill set. I think it's an important Definitely. skill. The more, yes, the more you do it, the more yeah. repetition, the better, more confident you feel when you start speaking yeah. to people. Well, when you're told your whole life, don't talk to strangers, don't look at people, you know, it's you There's just have to break that that mindset yeah do you think most people how about uh, being empathetic here do you think most people who are engaged by a stranger a friendly stranger that doesn't use a tacky line a corny line but does something interesting or provocative do you think they actually enjoy that or they're or are they scared At first, they probably think I it's think weird. They enjoy it. I think they like it. I'm sorry. Who goes? Um, could someone go again? Go ahead and repeat that. Well, I was just saying that um, I think they like it. You know, like you said, if, if you don't come up with something too corny, um, you know, people like to be approached and 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 out. I I do believe because sometimes especially I remember when my husband and I was living in Wisconsin, um, <laughs> people just look at you crazy. Like they don't speak to one another there. And I'm from really? the South, I'm from Georgia, where you don't even have to know me, but if you see me out in my yard, we're speaking, you know, you drive down the road and we're speaking. Um, so I think that it really depends on where you are, but you know, if you could do that um, in a place like Wisconsin, I take my hat off to you because those people, Hey, Claude. Go ahead, Steve. Hey, Claude. I'm here with Alan. Alan. Introduce Alan. Uh, Alan is a gentleman who uh, was just here at Starbucks, so I just kind of wanted to go up. We're in real estate. Alan, are you in real estate or no? No, I'm, uh, I'm retired. Retired. Okay. A retired gentleman here. So. Oh, my gosh. So how does a retired person live a Hold on one second here.
I can't ask, hear you. Ask him, how, how does a retired person live a comfortable life today? Uh, well, we saved well. We saved well, we bought well. So we bought and I worked thing. hard. <laughs> good for you, good common sense advice. When you say you bought hard, did you mean real estate or some kind of a sensible investment or? Uh, we've invested all, always. And, 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 yeah, and yeah, we've had real estate. Earlier in life we had uh, multiple real estate, now we just have our home. If, and let me ask you. Let me ask you something, Alan. Before we go, and thank you for joining our group here and prompt yeah, uh, like you, this. Uh, if if Steve uh, Steve is one of the uh, most tenacious investors in Seattle, if Steve found you a house that had a really good positive cash flow <laughs> for a minimal investment, you wouldn't be interested, would you? I, actually, at this point, we probably would not. Oh, okay. So even if it made you a couple, two, three thousand a month for a minor investment, that that's not you're something you're ready with right now. Ready for? <laughs> well, you know, yeah. when you put it like that. Well, we'll, yeah. we'll we'll have a discussion, Claude. Okay. Thank you for joining us, Alan. You bet. Okay. Cool. Yeah, Steve, just, uh, buy him a latte and get his card. Yeah, hold on. I'll just get him on mute. <laughs> that was funny. You never know what's good. Do you think they? Do you think he knows Alan already, or they just met? Do you think that was real? real? No, yeah, that I, was real. They just I, met. I they just met. met. Oh, okay, okay. I love it. My apologies. He's leaving my table, and he looks uncomfortable standing with his computer. I was trying to talk. I talked. To, I went to one person, got rejected, and then uh, Alan. So anyway, okay, Claude, I'll let you get back. I'm gonna. I'm gonna chat with Alan. For, okay. Very good. You guys have fun. Okay. Um, do you? Does every? Can everybody here do what they just did? Yeah. Can everybody talk to a stranger today? Anywhere in line at the supermarket, at Barnes and Noble, at the Jamba Juice, whatever. Can we engage strangers? I think it's a good practice, personally, to talk with people all day long. I, mean, I think the foundation of guts is to get so comfortable and so confident and do your marketing, whatever it is, and if you can speak to enough people every day something good will happen. I know this, this is how I built my business. I don't have an office, fancy office outside. I don't have 20 employees. All I do is give good phone all day long. I talk to people. I qualify them quickly and I ask them questions like a doctor would, back to the basics. And I just say, hey, why, why are you renting an apartment? I suppose that we could help you get into a, a property uh, that meets with your budget. You might have, that well, you wouldn't be interested in that, would you? Or how would you like to sell your home in the next 30 days? Or something like that. Ask provocative questions rather than give presentations to total strangers or follow-ups or warm calls. We all love the warm call all day long. And you will see magic happen. I think we're too busy with other junk rather than doing the one thing that makes us money today. What's your, give me some feedback. What do you guys think? Definitely. Chantel does something interesting when she's talking to strangers. So I want to share this story real quick because we were at the grocery store shopping one day and just talking and we were busy and frantic and this gentleman walked up to us, older man, didn't say a single word and he like touched my shoulder and he Whoa. handed me this card and I keep it in my wallet right here every day with me. And it was, it was a really thoughtful gesture, but he didn't say anything. He just touched my shoulder, handed it to me and walked away. And he gave us each a card and it just says, the front says, have a nice day. You're a special person. And then on the back, it says special people inspire, guide and teach us to love. Encouraging, healing, and protecting people are parts of their personalities. The world is blessed by your presence and dedication. Thank you. Okay. And that's the back. So I just, I would like to return the favor one day to somebody. But as you can see, I'm like, I don't want to let go of the card. But yeah, we did give, give the other one out. We yeah, we did, did give Ani's to somebody. But just something so simple, but it totally lady who was feeling down how yeah you, it's awesome. how, and that's nice but how, do, how could we utilize that in business exactly um well the the, the same way 
Okay. I mean, just, Engage, just, engaging in people. Hey, we got a few. We got a few minutes left here. Who hasn't? Who hasn't joined in yet? Who hasn't spoken today? Steve, you talk about. You like talk? Where are you from? You talk? Yeah, you talk. Okay. I'm the bagel man from New York. I know who you are. There you go. You talking to me? The con the conversation about about uh, making someone out. Everybody wants to feel special. Whether they whether they want to stand out or not is something different. The minute you can find a way to stroke their ego, you own them. You own the conversation. They want to listen to you when they already start to trust you. So that's that's all I wanted to add. That was how do you how do you do that in New York without getting a dirty look or a, uh, or something like that? How do you do that in New York? You know, I, I posted on uh, on on the, the website on on your on your website there the other day that uh, I made like sixteen calls. And I think it was Friday, and I said, you know, you're not doing your job unless you absolutely piss somebody off and get cursed out. I said I was at the end of it. I made like sixteen calls. And I says, all right, all right, all right. This isn't for me. Goodbye. We're done. And this guy went nuts. I just was at the end of it. I was just done. So, but how do you do that? You you stroke a person's ego. You could tell them, listen, I'm looking at this house online. This is a great looking house. Why are you selling it? Just to get a conversation going. Well, well you, know, you know, you know. I woke up this morning and I thought we should. Uh, it's the kids are grown up. We don't need this big a house anymore. Yeah, you could say that. Just, just when they start talking about financial, you want to know about the numbers on the house. So, you know, I respect that. You put a lot of time into thinking about these numbers. Wow, that's great. Well, listen, how about we take it to the next step and you let me know about this or that or whatever. So the conversation, you, it, once, once you stroke their ego, like you say, it makes a big difference. And I think, once, yeah, you know, I, 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 I agree. It's not phony and it's, it's genuine, then you're, you know, it's like the sales. You got you got to put on your th your thespian hat there. So you, you got to be a good actor because yep. have we all had someone try to schmooze us? You yeah, know? waste the time. Yeah, it's it's too obvious. You have to be good a good actor. You have to be sincere. Uh, you you know when you stroke someone's ego, okay, and um, and then you nurture it with stories and conversation, and then the magic happens where they start selling you. Well, to tell you the truth, Steve. Um, the house, we can't afford the house anymore. We need something smaller. Uh, we really just want to sell it and everything. And you keep going in that opposite redirection. And then they keep explaining why about their motivation. If but we can find number one, their motivation. They feel they can confide in you. Yes. And then now you've, now you've moved to that, the, the mountaintop, the Mount Everest of, for salespeople is, it is, it is called trust. Yep. When you have that adult to adult conversation, that trust, and say, hey, maybe, you know what, Steve, it's okay to say no to me. Always important to say that. Steve, it's okay to say no to me. I'm, I might have a few ideas for, uh, for you here. Can I ask you a few more questions? And I think I have a solution for you uh, if you want. There you go. Boom. Now I'm, now I'm is, see, we have to, we're responsible for changing that environment. But if we're doing it and we're coming across like 99%. Uh, like they sound like they're in an, uh, they locked you in a room with the Amway products. Okay. Anybody here ever get a locked in an Amway room or a network marketing room? Oh, you know, sure. it's the worst, isn't it? It's like uh, they trapped me and I can't, how do I get out? You know, but if you engage them and they like you, they trust you, they start sharing information. You can determine very quickly whether or not you can do, you can make money. You can do business today. And, it, and I think the important part is, that if you have enough what we call good conversations, you can make the next one and the one after that. But if you're getting brutalized all day long, I've been there. You know, when that phone is like a cactus, when these people are, are rude to you, snippy, hang up on you, do you want to make more phone calls? Honestly. Rough ride. It's a rough ride. No. So we're responsible for changing that environment and, and, and making it friendly, like Chantel was talking about, like Steve was saying now, if we can do that, it's easy to make those phone calls and to have that consistency. Um, and, and that's, you're going to, you're going to blow away your competition. If you start selling in a different way. Absolutely. One of the big things, but sit in front of a mirror when you, when you're on a telephone and if you smile really? and you look happy, a lot of it portrays over the phone. 
You know, that's, that's very interesting what you just said. I never thought of it like that. But when I'm on a Skype or a FaceTime call, it's like having a mirror in front of you, isn't yep. it? Yep, absolutely. And if, you know, did you ever talk to somebody and, and they get out their phone and they're just nodding their head and they're, you know they're doing something else, they're texting or they're busy with, so they're playing something else and they're not paying attention. What does that say to them? What does that say to you? You lost them. You lost them. You, you, lost, they, you don't have their attention at all. Hey, fast hour today, guys. Thank you. Have hey, a thanks, great Claude. I got, a, I got a phone number. We're going to go meet when he gets back from Europe. So pretty psyched. Steve, you made a new friend at Starbucks. That's it. <laughs> I got to tell you something. That was very cool. Round of applause for Steve here. <laughs> you, you dared me to do it, Claude. So. I dared you. Man, you got uh, uh, muy grande cojones, senor. Yeah, I said I'm going to do it. Well, everyone was watching. I wasn't going to back off. So No, that was – you get the cool award. You, if I had a trophy today, you would win it, man. Very good. Everybody have a great week, okay? Thanks a lot. Little, little, little Neil Young here as we wind down.